Studying the DNA of ancient organisms is a window into our distant past. And if you look hard enough, you can find some creatures today that haven't changed much in hundreds of millions of years. This coast is home to a relative that shows us how ancient the genetic recipe is for building our brain. Yeah, how do you know where to look? Well, I you want to go deeper into this. Meet Peter Holland, head of zoology at Oxford University in England. Right, okay, well we could start trying around X here. Marks the spot. X marks the spot, let's give it a go. Right. Okay, so what do I do? Here? Just shake it. You got one. There's no fiosis. We got any. Whoa, look at that little guy go. Hey! Just dip it in the water again, you'll see it. It'll flick around. Well, they really flick. Now you see. There he is. Hey, that's beautiful. Look at that. Which is the front? <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but this tiny creature called Amphioxus has much to tell us about our own brains. <laughs> that is cool. Oh. <laughs> okay, that ranks is cool. <laughs> okay, so let's let's take a look at a couple of these. So I brought this from the anatomy lab in Chicago. This is a, this is a human brain. And when I look at this, I don't find any obvious similarities to that. Deep in the genes of this animal and the development of this animal and deep in the genes of us and the development of us, there are the similarities. So if you just take a look at that. Oh, he's just moved. Oh, he twitched away. Yeah, he's they're wow. pretty active. Holy cow. Oh, that is beautiful. God, they're so clear too. You can see right yeah. through them. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Amphioxus lives in the sand of the ocean floor, filtering algae out of the water. They have a simple nerve cord that runs the length of the body, which ends with a tiny swelling invisible to the naked eye. If you look at the front end of this animal, you don't see it all expanded into a large skull or, or brain region. It's just pointed. We might not have similar brains, but what we do have are similar genes. To make the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain, you need a series of control genes to tell the cells within the developing brain where they are. They map out the brain's three basic regions. Versions of the same master genes that help form our own brains are also active in Amphioxus, but here they're simply building the primitive nerve cord and the tiny swelling at its front. This means that the genetic roots of our own brains can be seen in creatures that first arose over 500 million years ago. I think it gives us a glimpse into where our brains came from, into the basic organization of um, the brain of our ancestors. I mean, I find that mind-blowing. He's jumped oh, he's off course, sorry. <laughs> he's going on We have an escapee, sorry. He's on land living. Uh, He's gone rogue. Too. Yep, he's gone for the next transition. Exactly, he's, he's, he's in the Devonian now. <laughs>